The funding for this video is provided by the amazing members of our Patreon. Also contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Yeah, I started for PBS Kids. What you gonna do? Fight me? Anyway, roll the video. So, back in the day when my teacher did not feel like teaching, and many of you can relate to this, she would put on various VHS tapes. And if you don't know what a VHS tape is, it's basically a DVD before it became a DVD. And if you don't know what a DVD is, you may not be old enough to be watching this channel. But a DVD is what y'all know is streaming now. So she would put on a VHS tape in the television, and she would show us Schoolhouse Rock. I am very appreciative of what Schoolhouse Rock has done for me. Grammar and math wise. Schoolhouse Rock did honestly a really bad job at teaching history. As most of the episodes about history did not age well. And I think the one in particular that irked me the most was the one about the great American melting pot. So in this song, it states that the reason that America is so diverse because people come from all over the world here for opportunity, which is partly accurate because that is the truth. A lot of people do move to America for the sake of opportunities. I'm not going to act like that isn't true. But also a lot of us were here forced against our will. I am somebody who is a descendant of slaves. While a lot of black people who live in America are not descendants of slaves, plenty of us are and I'm one of them. That being said, because I am a descendant of slaves, my ancestors did not willingly come over here. They were kidnapped. And then it was another line in the song where they said something along the lines of how America was founded by the England, which is also inaccurate because they stole this shit. And like I said, as someone who is a descendant of slaves, it's always so annoying when I hear anything about Europeans finding America because they did not. They stole this land from the indigenous people. Tell the truth. Hey y'all, it's Harriana and I'm back with another video. Hi, hello, how are you guys doing? My name is Harriana. Welcome to or welcome back to The Pirate Ship, also known as Harry Hook's Pirate Ship. I'm the captain. You are not my first mate. I don't got no first mate because you want to know why. Bring your ear closer to the speaker so you can hear me clearly. Nobody's worthy of being the first wave. But hi, hello, how are you guys doing? My name is Harriana and I, I like, we're, what are we doing? How did I forget that quick? Hi, I'm Harriana. I like to make content based off nostalgia and family and children's entertainment and all the issues that I find within those spaces. Today, I am here to basically do the job that the school system fails to do so. It actually um, debunked a lot of the things that we just learned or did not and bring light to them. But before we get started, I just want to make a few little announcements. One, I do have a Patreon because some of you guys have asked me, do I have a Patreon? Yes. Any little bit helps. I appreciate it. Thank you. Two commissions are open for art. Uh, you can sign up through my Ko-fi. And then three, the art and all new products are on my website on harryannahook.com. Use code HOTSPOT30 if you like 30% off. But yeah, I have added new um, bookmarks, some prints, and I have also added some new lip glosses. The first section of this video is called Teaching to Transgress, which is named after a very lovely book. Is it lovely? I don't know. But it's a book that I read by Bell Hooks that was very much informative because in Teaching to Transgress, it really stuck with me because it made me realize why so many people don't want to learn. And I get numerous comments from people all the time about how my channel has helped them out when it comes to learning. But then I also have to ask myself, why does my channel help people learn? But also I find ways to engage them in the subject matter with things that are familiar with all of us, not just me. But as I'm talking about, we need things to engage us with this media. Let's talk about Gravity Falls for a second. Now I know you're probably thinking, Harry, what the actual hell does Gravity Falls have to do with this? You're, you, we're gonna get there, we're gonna get there. Because baby, a lot. Remember, when people have to teach to transgress, we also have to learn to transgress. Find things that we enjoy and understand how they relate to society. So, 
Gravity Falls is a series I think that holds so much value because of the symbolism within this series as Gravity Falls is a show that surrounds a city named Gravity Falls that is just very strange and strange things happen. There are a lot of things that go unanswered and there's so much odd shit that happens that nobody even questions until these two twins Dipper and Mabel come to stay with their great uncle for the summer and they were like no we need to figure out what this is because how are y'all not bothered by this but as i say that in this one particular episode of gravity falls everyone in the city has been believing lies about their town because they were never told the truth about that town as i mentioned weird shit happens all the time here and no one just thinks anything of it so to everyone's knowledge gravity falls was founded by the northwest family with the man in charge named Nathaniel Northwest. But the truth is, is that it wasn't founded by the Northwest family. It was founded by a man named Quentin Trembley, but they hid that away so much to the point where it looks as if he did not exist. And while I'm not saying that we have to do deep digging like Dipper and Mabel did in this episode to find a real founder, but we do have to do a nice little Google search because our school systems really like to jump over and avoid talking about numerous things. Mind you, y'all know the person named Sally Hemmings if you don't look her up, but y'all will always learn about Thomas Jefferson. They have no issue teaching y'all ass about Thomas Jefferson, but they won't teach you who Sally Hemmings is. I kid you not, go look her up. Because if you look up Thomas Jefferson, many things about her don't come up. And speaking of the U.S. presidents, we go so long with not knowing that many of these presidents had slaves or were very much for slavery. They always want to dance around how the White House got there and they literally will not tell you who built that shit and they just act like one day some good noble citizens put it together and that's absolutely false. Part of that has to do with the fact that them white people didn't want to go build it. They didn't. They say that James Hoban built the White House and no that's not true he designed the White House they say he created the White House which technically yes but he did not put that thing together slaves were forced to build the White House y'all need to start telling people exactly how that went down so around this time last year I made the chaotic masterpiece titled Fandom has a white woman's serious problem. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's the channel trailer here for a reason. And in that video, I mentioned how when we learn about horrible people in school, most of the time it's just only white men and they don't even do a good job teaching that. But that's another topic for another time. But we barely ever learn about horrible white women that was right along there with them. And while yes, women do have it bad because of this thing we called misogyny those white women that they teach us about in school they were often labeled as good and hmm, that's not exactly true one woman in particular that we learn about often is named susan b anthony and here i want to bring up a point that i want to come back to later because our entertainment that we watch growing up is a contribution to this false narrative that we have learned as they are aware that our school systems do a horrible job of teaching us our history they tend to incorporate these things into their series but don't do a great job of it so in the Powerful of girls classic meaning the one that came out in 1998 there was an episode that that was about a female villain named femme fatale who just reeks of white feminism and susan b anthony was a key talking point throughout the episode and as the powerpuff girls is said to be an air quote feminist show which i will make a video later about arguing if this show is really feminist or not mind you i love the powerful girls i'm gonna stand hands down because it's a series that focuses on three superhero girls it does make a bit of sense of why it is labeled as feminist and why they choose to talk about a public figure that was very important to women's rights but 
What these people fail to tell you is that Susan B. Anthony really only cared about the rights for white women. That is why when we talk about feminism, it, a lot of people prefer if you use the term womanism because feminism was just created for cis hetero able-bodied white women. In the long battle for women's suffrage and the passage of the 19th Amendment, some leading activists prioritized white women's suffrage over voting rights for all women. Two of the most prominent women suffragists, Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton, were at one time part of the American Equal Rights Society, a group they formed with Frederick Douglass and other activists in 1866. The organization's goal was to win voting rights for both women and African Americans, said Lisa Stradulal. I am so sorry for mispronouncing your name, a history professor at Carnegie Mellon University. There's tension from the very beginning over the priority of those two demands, she says. Black women fall out of this equation. Anthony also sought to distance her work from Douglas, who continued to support women's suffrage for the rest of his life. During the 1819 suffrage meeting in Atlanta, she asked him to not appear on stage with white women because it would seem inappropriate. However, these racist strategies ultimately proved ineffective because Southern white men were already preventing black men from voting with discriminatory poll taxes, tests, and lynching. When I tell you, this lady is so racist, I, I don't even know where to begin. Susan B. Anthony is not the icon y'all think she is. But as I mentioned, that Susan B. Anthony only cared about the rights for white women. She didn't give a fuck about nobody else. But thinking back at that time period in the world where, you know, things were very much ableist and homophobic and transphobic just as well, most likely just white women who were cis, hetero, and able-bodied. And not even just able-bodied mentally stable i put on top of that but the powerful girls just present her as this amazing figure when she was a deeply flawed person and her actions caused harm to women of color especially black women girl i mentioned this before on my channel i love the powerful girls but this is a white ass show it's so white like it's really white white as white bread white as a croissant that you can get in paris france Okay, white. It's white as hell. It's white as ash on your knees and elbows. This show is white. But like I said, this show is white as hell. I'm not even joking because to my knowledge, all of the writers for this series are white. Barely any people of color were put into the show unless they were like a racial caricature. I'm, and it's not even really that surprising. Or the people in the episode are not being kind to them. I ain't forget about Pablo. So them putting this in here, like Susan B. Anthony did so much for women's rights, wasn't surprising because this show gave white feminists very nothing, if not all the time. Also, I would like to mention that everybody in the main voice cast for the Proper Girls was white. Yeah, they have few voice actors of color day play here and there, but that main voice cast, and especially the recurring ones, those were white people. So then I have to sit here and think, it's a white ass show created by white people. But then how did we end up here? How did we get here? Did they just not do their research on Susan B. Anthony? And they did, but I'm gonna say that they only went on the surface of it. Because if you actually want to know about Susan B. Anthony's problem with black people, you gotta do a deeper Google search. You gotta go to Galileo. You gotta go look in the databases, okay? Even here on YouTube, you gotta type in specific things about Susan B. Anthony if you want to find out about her being racist. It's honestly a bit jarring. That's why so many white people were shocked to find out that she didn't like us like i said they only just looked at the surface of it they didn't look at the whole picture and that is how our school system teaches us history they scrub the top and just leave the rest which is very important under the ground hi everyone the captain here I just wanted to get on here real quick and tell you guys thank you so much for your support. I have gotten so much fan art from you guys and I've met plenty of y'all in person at the conventions that I have been at. And also thank you guys so much for coming to the panels that I host. It means so much to me. You guys are so great. I appreciate every little last bit of support you guys give me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can say thank you a hundred times but I truly do mean it. Thank you.
Yeah, now we're here talking about good old nasty ass Dr. Seuss. Listen, I have spoken about Dr. Seuss numerous times on this channel, okay? And as I have spoken about him numerous times, I feel like it's just important to talk about. Y'all already know I ain't never gonna let that man down for what he did to his wife. I, mm -mm. let's go ahead and get into the notes on the outline because I can sit here and just go off about him for like 20 minutes, but I'm not gonna do that. And part of that has to do with the fact that I was a little Dr. Stu Stan growing up. I adored this man. I looked up to him. Trust me, I was hurt, hurt. But I have spoken about this man numerous times on my channel, but I just feel like people miss the whole entire issue when it comes to Dr. Seuss because it's not about his talents and what he contributed to society. Like, yeah, Dr. Seuss was a despicable human being, but I recommend reading the book, Was the Cat in the Hat Black? I am going to read you a bit from that book and then I will come back. To dismantle our children's literature arpathate, we must change the way we produce, promote, read, and teach literature for young people. As Ralph Ellison once observed, while fiction is but a form of symbolic action, a mere game of as if therein lies in the true function and its potential of effective change. For at all the most serious, just as true as politics at its best, it is thrust towards human ideal. To move closer to that idea, we must recognize that we need diverse books and Black Lives Matter are not just slogans. They are directives. Buy diverse books. Teach diverse books. Fight white supremacy in all forms, but especially in children's literature. What we read when we are young shapes us deeply because when we are children, we are still very much in the process of becoming. That is why children's literature is one of the most important arenas in which to combat prejudice. As in this book, Was the Cat in the Hat Black, it focuses on the issues with racism, with Dr. Seuss books, and how just children books have a diversity problem overall. And the books created by people of color often get overlooked and are hard to find. That's the main issue. It's more than just a problem with Dr. Seuss. It made me realize the bigger issue with Dr. Seuss that made people miss the point of it. Yes, Dr. Seuss books help many people. The art in them is amazing. The stories are cute sometimes, but also people saw this as us canceling Dr. Seuss when no, absolutely not. But that wasn't necessarily the point of it all. We weren't trying to cancel Dr. Seuss. The problem is that we were celebrating this man everywhere all the time in school his books would be plastered around everywhere when it, his birthday came around we would literally be dressed up in little dr seuss heads and we would be reading his stories all day long so many of the books that frequently got checked out in our school's library were dr seuss books to the point where they had to get numerous copies to make sure everyone had one to read it even got into a point where they literally started gifting teachers in the school Dr. Seuss book so we wouldn't have to you know share the same ones in the library. The issue is that we celebrated this man all the time with having no knowledge of him being racist when it was clearly our face the entire times because his books are filled with racial caricatures. Let me get it right. Racial caricatures, car caricatures, get it right Harry, and menstrual shows. The Cat in the Hat is literally a menstrual show. I'm not even joking. And it's weird because when you Google Dr. Seuss, this shit don't come up. You gotta look. <laughs> and the reason why it started to make noise about Dr. Seuss's issue with how he viewed just not white people in general is because people on social media started to post about it. Social media really plays a big factor when it comes to education especially history while yes you should still go out here and do your own research social media is how a lot of us even know about so many of the world's issues because if it weren't for social media i would not have known about trayvon martin when i was in middle school and i mentioned this before on this channel but i found it so disgusting because mind you i was around the same age as rue from the hunger games and the trayvon martin stuff was going on at the same time and it's so disturbing to me how so many people said with their whole chest that they did not care about Rue dying because she was black. They literally saw it as less sad because she was black. Mind you, Trayvon Martin was K-worded at this same time. And I was around the same age as both of them. That was hurtful to see. Y'all are ignorant, do better. And also stop telling black girls that we just being sensitive. No, y'all, the world is nasty to us. We have every right not to like y'all. 
But as I was saying, Dr. Seuss is a public figure that we are taught about when we really just learn about what he likes to draw and write about. We are basically fed this lie about him and his behavior because I'm telling you, Dr. Seuss was wilding. That man was a little wild, so I'm okay. But because people have no idea of this history of bigotry that goes up until close to his death date, mind you, he was wilding his whole life. Keep that in mind. It wasn't just a period of time where he learned and grew and did better. No, he kept doing it. Because one of the books that got pulled from publishing, I'm not sure if it got pulled from publishing, but it may have gotten pulled from printing. It was one of his last books. So yeah, what y'all say about that? How you like them apples? So as I mentioned, we are just sold this idea of this man that just like to create art for people of all ages to enjoy. We just think that he likes to draw cute little silly drawings. We think he likes to make stories that rhyme. We read his books all the time. We watched his TV specials. But so many of us thought so highly of this man until we were adults and learned the truth about him. And by the way, if you guys want to know more about um, my um, beef with Dr. Seuss, my book, No One Ruin Your Childhood, is available for purchase in um, physical. The physical copies are not back yet. I most likely will have those restocked next week. But the digital copy is there and then the audiobook should be coming soon. So yay. I find it really sad how many of us did not know until we were grown about Dr. Seuss's behaviors when it came to people of color and his wife. So the best person to compare Dr. Seuss to is Walt Disney. Mind you, I am somebody that did not really learn about Walt Disney growing up. Mind you that we often watched his movies in school. Why the hell did we watch Pocahontas? Watch my video about how Disney gave her the Marilyn Monroe treatment. I worked hard on that one. Please watch it. The link will be down below. But as I was saying, Walt Disney is someone that we aren't necessarily taught about in school like we are with Dr. Seuss. But so much Disney stuff is just a part of our childhoods and we think nothing of. These are two people these are two people who created family media, but has issues with the way they view people that weren't like them. Like Dr. Seuss. Walt Disney was very racist and this is something that we don't learn about until we are grown and also a lot of people don't seem to understand that Disney has a really big issue with the way he views women having to do with fat phobia ageism classism race especially the whole nine and it is a big reflection of the overall company, especially when you look at their Disney princess line. But that's another topic for another discussion. Are we here to drag Disney today? Yeah, a little bit, but we can do that next week. But as I had mentioned, Dr. Seuss was very racist, but this is something that we didn't learn about until we were grown. And because people love Dr. Seuss books and they love Disney properties and Disney movies, mind you, I, I like both, not gonna lie, I'm gonna be completely honest, but I've been feeling really, really ill towards a lot of these properties that fall under these two people's names. They even legit refuse to acknowledge the problems within the works. Like y'all, it is bad that most of us did not learn that they were racist until we became adults. Y'all lied to us. Y'all, we literally get lied to our whole lives about history. Because you want to know why our school system is just too uncomfortable with teaching us about something that is a big issue, not just within America, but the world. And that is racism. Because I remember someone even said something to me. They was like, your channel pisses me off, but it's because I'm learning stuff and it's making me mad about how much I am learning from you. And I was like, well, baby, I'm doing my job perfectly. <laughs> And also anytime we learn about a white public figure that contributed to society and any lick of the anti-blackness, anti-indigenous and anti-Asian sentiment that these people had got glossed over and it was a big factor with their views. As I can just sit here all day and talk to you about all the people that we learned about when we were younger and just let you know about their issue their issues with misogyny and racism and anti-semitism too just as well 
I'm only gonna bring up one more person because this video is going to be entirely too long and your girl got other stuff to get done. I have a research paper due for school on the subject of the black arts movement, which is a very depressing subject that I was not here for. The last person I want to talk about today is um, the man that you know his name, but you may not know much about him. And that would have to be former president who who been dead for like probably over a hundred years, I'm pretty sure. James K. Polk, y'all are, our washing machine is making weird noise. We just got a new one. Please don't do this. Please don't do this to us. But as I have mentioned about how when family entertainment wants to bring up public figures and they do an ass job of doing so, one thing I've noticed when it comes to the subject of kids shows is that they mention the presidents like they were good people. And no, no, like most of them were not, all right? But then that just has to do with government related stuff. But anyways, as they make a lot of throwaway jokes to them, they name schools after them. Mind you, y'all need to be more particular about who y'all naming these schools after in your shows. I'm not even joking. Be more safer. Cause no, why would you want to go to a school named after Thomas Jefferson? Hell no. I'm telling y'all, I got beef with Thomas Jefferson. I got beef with Dr. Seuss. I got beef with Walt Disney for sure. I know he be rolling in his grave every time I mention his name. <laughs> it even comes down to the fact that them putting them in the shows themselves. Like y'all, stop putting Abraham Lincoln in y'all shows. Please, stop. That man is not the icon that you think he is. But we're not here to talk about Lincoln. We're here to talk about James K. Polk. Mind you, because I just really wanted to talk about Nasty Classified School Survival Guide again on here. Most of y'all only know who James K. Polk is. It's because of Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide because that was the name of the school in the series. It was named after him. But I kid you not. Can you tell me anything? Someone that's not a history nerd. Can you tell me anything about James K. Polk? Can you even tell me what number president he was? Can you? Can you? No. And if you say yes, good for you. Proud of you. You know your history. James K. Polk falls into that subject of the president that we barely learn much of anything about because y'all, I'm not even joking. We will literally learn so much information, which is still very glossed over about like the first five presidents and then the rest is just mentioned in passing. And then the one that was in office during World War II, Roosevelt, we learn a good bit about him and his wife. And then also we didn't learn about Nixon and his scamming ass until we were in high school. As I mentioned, I said this before, our school system does a really awful job when it comes to teaching us properly about the presidents, when it comes down to the fact that just mentioning that they were the president at some point and moving on. So moving back to James K. Polk and just moving back to Nickelodeon in general, Nickelodeon used to have these little programs where they would educate us about the president. And all they did was just name the president and like a fun silly little fact about them. That's it. We barely learned about these people. So in Ned's Declassified, the school is named after him and it's constantly said. So you know what? Let's go take a little look about who he was as a person and how he viewed people specifically people of color. Andrew Jackson served as Polk's mentor and Polk's nickname, Young Hickory, reflect the strong relationship between the two as Jackson's nickname was Old Hickory. Popular lore states that Jackson convinced Polk to pursue Sarah Childress, who later became his wife. They married in 1824 and became true partners. Mrs. Polk received an outstanding education and used her superb intelligence to support her husband's career, often aiding him in political matters. Polk was a strong Jackson and Democrat and absorbed most of Jackson's ideologies. Polk opposed banks and high tariffs and supported Native American removal and the extension of slavery. Polk himself was a slave owner and owned a large cotton plantation with his brother. Polk did not waver from these core principles throughout his entire career. What I tell you, what I tell you, Honestly, I have gotten to the point where I look up old white people to see if they was racist or not. And half the time they do be disappointed, but not surprised. Very disappointed, but not surprised whatsoever. Especially when it comes to a lot of these old Hollywood people. Y'all want to know what surprised me? I was actually really happy. Marilyn Monroe was not racist. May her ass rest in peace. Bless her heart. And also, I would like to mention, it's a uh, she ain't no French actress, but she was always in France. Her name was Jean Seberg. She was very 
in to like you know social like civil rights very helpful with the black panther party and all of that shit like the woman was not racist and she was brutalized for that and it makes me so upset how when oftentimes we look up things about gene seberg they like to gloss over this aspect because it even just comes down to the fact of white people in the past being supportive of black people because i know i looked and did my digging to see if um, what's the man that made electricity? Did he make electricity? I don't know. But Benjamin Franklin, I went and did my research about Benjamin Franklin to see if he was racist. And there actually was a part in here talking about how he wasn't sure about black people, but his wife convinced him to go to the school of black children to, you know, see. And he realized there's nothing wrong with them. Why aren't we taught about these things? I think it's important for us to know about if these historical figures were racist, but also I think it's important for us to know if they weren't racist. I think it's important for us to know if they were down for the cause. I am telling y'all, when it comes to the subject of racism, school does not feel comfortable with teaching it and it fucking sucks because it is a big problem in our society. It's the elephant in the room. That's the reason why so many people be getting on me so bad about my channel. Because they be like, ooh, you always gotta bring race into this. No, racism is so casual within our world that when somebody actually points it out, it makes you mad because it makes you uncomfortable. So moving back to how y'all always like to bring up public figures within these shows and movies, if y'all gonna bring these people up, tell the truth about them. Or just don't put them in there at all. Or actually do better about the kind of people that you choose to put there. But as I mentioned, Nickelodeon is just very guilty of doing this overall because I kid you not, there are so many times where I watch a series specifically on Nickelodeon. I'm gonna go ahead and say it, the Fairly Odd Parents. They love to bring up some Abraham Lincoln up in here. Y'all, stop acting like that man was extremely down for the calls because he wasn't. He absolutely wasn't. While he was a bit more progressive than the other presidents, he still was a white man that felt weird towards people of color. Like, come on, we gotta talk about it. So, Q, I love your girl. To close this out, I just have like a few little bullet points I would like to read off. Just like, where do we go from here about our school systems failing us? I think at this point, we are just fully aware that our school systems did an awful job with not just teaching us American history, but teaching us world history just as well. Because I kid you not, I was so lost about the world that it was a certain point in my life where I didn't even know black people lived in England and kid you not I didn't even know white people lived in Africa like I legit did not know that shit until I watched The Color of Friendship and we weren't taught that and mind you that we were not really even taught about African history just as well especially what was going on in South Africa which is something that was deeply crucial to what was going on in America at the time being it's sad that we don't know that and it's actually really sad that a lot of people like me and you really don't know much about it. The color of friendship with our introduction to learning about South African history. And one thing that gets on my nerves is that like shows like to bring up little stuff like for like shits and giggles or whatnot and Henry Danger is guilty of this because I remember they were making an entire joke about oh learning about Puerto Rican history yada, yada. and it was trying to sound all quirky and cute because they know it's something that we don't learn about in school but I was like no that's something we actually do need to learn about i don't understand why y'all are trying to make a joke about learning about the history of puerto rico what is wrong with y'all what's funny what's the joke dan snyder exactly what's the beef what's funny let me know please okay and also it came down to the fact that a lot of people just don't know that black people live in europe y'all want to know how they got there slavery they won't tell you that they really will not teach you that and also they won't teach you that anti-blackness is universal it's not just the problem with white countries they won't teach you that either when i tell you you're gonna come to my channel you're gonna learn something you're gonna come over this channel and take away something okay like why do y'all think the song niggas in paris exists because niggas be there and before anybody try to get on me for saying the word nigga i'm black don't play with me y'all be trying it <laughs> but my final point that i just want to bring up is that this is why so many of y'all including myself be in for a rude awakening when you enter adulthood and learn the truth about the things that they taught you i want to close this out because um i just want the last part of this video to be a little bit more authentic 
I'm sorry if this ending just feels a little bit all over the place but I do want to bring up the subject of Disney adults again because I feel like a lot of Disney adults just get a lot of shit for no reason like oh you're an adult that's obsessed with Disney I understand people can be mean it's harmless they're not hurting anyone but one thing a lot of Disney adults specifically the ones that are white and or the C word that ends with N is that a lot of them just don't want to accept the fact that this company has bad issues when it comes to almost every single bad thing in this world. The, seri the company has bad issues with anti-Semitism. Still, to this day, there is anti-Semitism within their works. The company we been knew has a big problem with racism. The problem is like very, very present absolutely they have bad issues with ageism they have bad issues with classism elitism it's so many freaking issues with this company especially when it comes to what's going on with their production team i filmed an entire video that i do plan to get out soon about how disney is underpaying their production workers for their animation departments it's absolutely frustrating and i will post that video later on but bringing back this so many people just don't want to sit here and face the truth about what it is with this company like they are horrible these people not all but a lot of them are not good and its founder was not a good person either it's, it's okay to admit that it's okay to admit that walt disney was a misogynistic racist dickhead it's the truth it's absolutely the truth and people will sit here and try to deny it all the time but baby the proof is in the pudding the evidence is there he literally said the n-word and didn't apologize for it <laughs> and it just frustrates me to know that so many of these disney adults will sit here and defend this company for its wrong actions and sometimes this is why people be saying y'all are a cult this is absolutely why people say y'all are a cult y'all can even say i'm a disney adult but i was like am i really a disney adult because so much of the stuff that y'all be doing i'm only gonna sit with y'all y'all be scaring me okay it's just something to think about it's just we have been like i said we are sold this idea about our history within the world we are also sold this idea about what goes on with the disney company a lot of us did not have access to the internet when we were little we didn't know how to do a deep google search looking for facts and history and all of this jazz because so many people were not even finding out about dr seuss and walt disney being racist until i say the last five years not even joking and then especially in 2020 when everybody was pulling out the racist receipts that stuff came up too and a lot of people were just in disbelief about what was going on with these companies and what was going on with its founders and i was like y'all that's just american history that's just the truth it's honestly not even surprising to find out about how horrible walt disney was and how much of a menace he was saying with dr seuss because if you look at u.s history back then a lot of white men was like that that's a lot of regular smuggler white men out here that nobody knows back in the same age that was just like them but because these men had money and these men had power it is something that just often get overlooked it's bad that y'all constantly overlook dr seuss and walt disney for what they have done simply because of them being wealthy white men they had access to these materials they you know made great art that had numerous issues that reflected their shitty ass views it's sad it's weird and you can sit here and like these properties as much as you can there's a whole bunch of discussions about separating the art from the artist i understand that i get that it's just certain artists where i feel like you can't do that with but with these two people y'all need to sit here and just own up to the fact that they just aren't it especially with disney and i'm somebody that over the last few years disney is somebody that i talk about all the time on this channel it's a company that i speak about all the time i talk about so many disney properties and mind you when i talk about race and misogyny and issues all that i'm not even joking when i say that disney is usually associated with almost all of those things not even playing if it ain't disney it's nickelodeon which is another can of worms itself that company got so many problems who nickelodeon run the fade run the fade baby y'all owe everybody y'all are horrible and shit like this is just like is it even worth shutting up anymore at this point because i've been debating if i even want to work in the professional film industry anymore but i was just like no 
I don't know anymore actually just seeing how so many of these producers just treat the people around how so many of these CEOs treat people I'm just like should we just go to indie route I don't know should we go to independent publishing companies for our books I don't know there's a lot of books that y'all can sit here and find nowadays that are independently published that y'all can read that are not associated with these horrible people okay but i just wanted to get those thoughts out to end this video thank you guys so much for watching commissions are open um art um is on my site they're bookmarked and i have some prints and like i said the stickers will come later at patreon if you guys want to support the channel that way and you're watching this video with the ads on the whole way through thank you so much deeply do appreciate it it truly does make a big difference i think that's all i gotta say Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good day, night, or whatever time of the day you're watching this. Follow me on Instagram because that's really the only social media place I'm active now and on anymore. Link will be down below. And my main account is just Hariana, H-A-R-I, right in an A. Um, I don't know why my nose always starts to itch. My nose is itching. I have bad allergies. I honestly need to go take a Benadryl. But I told myself to suffer through your allergies. So make sure you can get this film and then go take Benadryl and you'll be knocked out later. I'm telling you, having allergies is like, it's not fun. It is not fun. Especially when Momocon coming up. Momocon is coming up. I'm going to have a table. So it will be a lot easier for me to meet a lot of y'all. And also got like five panels. So I'm going to be meeting a lot of y'all that weekend. But I can't wait to see y'all. I can't wait for the event. My cosplays are going to be super duper fun. But yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good night. So now, now that you see, you should be aware of the power of three. They come to fight as fast as they can. They're dangerous, yet fabulous. Because the Utonium made them is true. They are the colors of pink, green, and blue. They'll catch you in the blink of an eye and do it all before the time. They coming through and fighting, oh. and everyone they shocking. Oh. You know, no one can stop them all because of the chemical oh. acid. They coming through and coming Before bedtimes from Townsville, Memphis, New York to LA. The Powerpuff Girls are just here to stay.